everybody on, and today I'm going to be presenting about the Nereus polychaete. So to start off, to understand where the Nereus polychaete comes from, we have the phylum Annelida, and this is basically um, where you will find all the worms and that are segmented and stuff. Then we have class Polychaeta, and this is basically um, where the Nereus is found. However, Annelida also has the class Oligochaeta and Hyrudinea. So, the basic morphology of a polychaete is going to be um, composed of uh, segmentation. So, these worms are coelomates. As you can see, they have three main um, or four main parts to their body. So the first segment is going to be the prostomium, and this is going to include um, their organs such as the antennae and the palps, which are sensory organs. Then we'll, you will find the peristomium, which is the head, kind of, and it's going to have organs such as the eyes on the dorsal side and their mouth on the ventral side. After the peristomium comes the thickest chunk of their body and it's going to be more than one segment long. So as you can see, the trunk um, has these segments and they, each segment has a pair of um, parapodia. So these parapodia are basically the equivalent of their feet. So their parapodia are going to have chitae. So their chitae are usually made of chitin. And what these um, organs do is that they aid in locomotion and they can be also used for feeding or for gas exchange in some cases. They also help them in tube building, which is um, their habitat, which I will explain uh, later on. So their locomotion is usually um, due to their parapodium, but they also have longitudinal muscles that run um, all along their bodies and by contracting and releasing these muscles they make undulated or undulating motions and that's how some of them move as well which helps them move through their um, tubes once they are made and the final segment here is going to be the pygidium and what this will um, have is the anus or the rectum and sometimes it's going to include um, some sensory theory in there as well. So now we have the nervous system and there's two diagrams here to look at. So we can see that the, these polychaetes are controlled by one brain and attached to that brain is going to be the ventral cord. Now the ventral cord is going to run from the head all the way to the last segment. Now from these ventral cords, there's going to be a paired ganglion coming out on each side and out towards each segment of the, um, of the worm. And what this does is that it allows the nerves to be supplied to all the organs that they need for survival. So um, as previously mentioned, you can see that there's eyes and palps in the head and these are sensory organs which will help them basically um, find food and be aware of predators and just um, have a sense of what of the environment around them. Okay, so their digestive system. Their digestive system is pretty um, straightforward. They're going to have a mouth, a pharynx, the esophagus, intestine, and um, the rectum. So the, ma the mouth is usually where the food comes in first, and it's just going to go down into the pharynx. Now their pharynx is really complex, and it's really interesting um, because it can be averted uh, just like a proboscis to catch food. And this pharynx will have um, jaws at its posterior end, which will be used to further grind down whatever it is they catch. 
The esophagus is gonna um, connect basically the pharynx to the intestine and the intestine is gonna make sure that all that food goes down and gets um, digested properly. Now when this food is properly digested, it's gonna be ready to go out and that's what the rectum is gonna be for, which will include the anus and it's um, really interesting because these worms have actually two main holes so the mouth and the anus it's not like other species where there's only one opening in their bodies so the reproductive system um, over there you can see there's a picture or a diagram of the trichophore larvae and that is going to be um, one of the stages once they're born but the nereus is actually gonochoristic and its reproduction will begin with releasing gametes into the coelom where they will start maturing now while this is happening the adults are becoming epitopes or the mature version of these nereus worms so um, while these epitopes are getting ready for reproduction, they will enhance their uh, nervous system, their sensory system, their eyes will actually get larger, they um, uh, also enhance their locomotive um, system, which will basically help them swim to the surface of the water once they're ready, and that's where they will shed their sperm or their eggs, depending on their sex, and then that's where fertilization will occur. So um, the sperm and the eggs will find their way to each other and in the water. Now, after they release these um, sperm or eggs, the epitope actually dies. So that's really unfortunate. Now their habitats. So as previously mentioned, these worms actually live in tubes underground or burrows. Um, and they are mainly made um, with their parapodium, e even though sometimes they can use their vertebrate proboscis to make them. Once they uh, make the initial hole, they will use their longitudinal muscles to further move down into the sediment. So these burrows will actually be found around uh, the intertidal zone, around mussels and or barnacles, and they are usually um, found in sandy or muddy sediments, making them um, making it easier for them to burrow down. Okay, so Nereus has um, various relationships with its environment and the species that surround it. So some of the, one of the species um, it has a relationship with is with Aranicola marina. It's actually a negative relationship because in a study it was found that Nereus diversicolor was actually predating in juvenile Aranicola and this caused the Aranicola population to greatly decrease or even be absent whenever Nereus was around. Um, uh, Nereus is also, um, was also uh, studied and it was found that it impacted the benthic diatom by not letting them uh, colonize whenever they were around. However, they also are known to be sediment stabilizers, which like we learned in class um, is really important for other species around. So thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope you enjoyed it.